Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawmiddin. Ameen. Allah bless the Prophet Nubdrali al-Islam. Thank you for sending the Prophet Nubdrali al-Islam. Allah bless Prophet Muhammad and the companions of the Prophet Muhammad and the true followers of the Prophet Muhammad, you know, the family of the Prophet Muhammad. And Allah may you raise Prophet Muhammad to the highest uh, rank in Jannah, as well as Prophet Nubdrali. We thank you for sending us the Prophet Nubdrali to redeem us from empty slavery and redeem us of our sinful ways and to lead us back to your path. Oh, great God of the universe, you know, lead us back to your, your messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because this is uh, this really the, the, the end game, you know, of the more science temples of America. Is, um, and um, I'm asking you to uh, guide them uh, to this consciousness, to this realization. I mean, I'd like to give honor to uh, all true boys who follow the prophet to a destiny that is not uncertain nor unknown. For they are fortified by the impregnable doctrine built up on love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Okay. But what I want to talk about today, I want to read an article uh, from the uh, Psychology Today, uh, or, you know, Psychology Today online. Okay concerning the psychology of insults, right? And it has a, a by a uh, Nigel Barber, PhD, you know, Dr. Nigel Barber. And underneath it, his, his uh, picture and, and name and title, he has something called the human beast, okay? <laughs> well, anyway, the, the, uh, the, the title of the article is the, the psychology of insults. There's a subtitle beneath it called The Desire to Put Others Down May Be As Old As Dot 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 Chickens. Okay, I thought I would read this article today, uh, The Psychology of Insults, because uh, we need a better understanding of why, you know, the Europeans feel need to sensationalize the humiliation of us, you know, uh, i.e., uh, uh, reports, sensational reports of people called us nigger, uh, and uh, sensational visual, you know, sensational visuality of us being assaulted and even murdered, you know, uh, on, on camera, you know, on video, you know, or televised, televised assaults and humiliation against African people, you know, and uh, we need to talk about that. We need to understand that. See, and the psychology of insults, right? This article, the psychology of insults, could help us understand it because what's what's what take what is the reason behind a lot of this uh, assault and insult? Of us, you know, is is psychological warfare it's designed to demoralize us, to distract us, and everything, you know. And they want us to act in in mass hysteria, you know, uh, mass disruption. You know, they they get funds. They get disaster funds for for, you, for uh, riots, people tearing stuff up and everything. But guess what? That money don't go down to the people, you understand, who who cause all that mayhem and destruction and everything. You know, who who, uh, who, who they say, but they're not really the, the cause of it. The people who ignite that kind of disturbance, social disturbance in the social order, they're the ones responsible for it. But, you know, Little that we know, they get funds for that. You know, the saying was, if a, a serious riot was a break off, say like eighty percent of a city was to erupt in social disorder. Then, you know, they they can petition the governor for disaster funds. You know, the state of emergency funds, right? But anyway, it's, you know, it, yeah. And, but you know, have to stop, stop acting uh, uh, like that. I mean, you know, we have to stop, start being quiet and. and you know, and do what we have to do. Okay, we have to speak strategic, uh, strategic in public, voice about what we're going to do and everything. But uh, put it this way, you know, bullying only understands the points of themselves. Right. A bully, a bully only understands a punch in his nose. Right. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's far I'm going to go with it. 
you know, because you know you you, you can't you can't let, uh, keep letting people you know abuse you, humiliate you, you know, disrespect you, you know. They know you're defenseless. They know you're defenseless. You know, defenseless, unarmed, and defenseless. You know, you, you, you uh, that fear handcuffs you. You know, you handcuff yourself with fear and cowardice. You handcuff yourself. See, and when they know you, you're in fearful, you know, you're a coward and you're in fearful, you know, you're handcuffs. You're handcuffed. You're handcuffed behind the seat of a squad car. And this cop, you know, this criminal with a badge, assaults you and beats on you and everything. You're handcuffed in custody. And you're still getting abused and assaulted. Right. Well, anyway, let's read, let's read uh, The Psychology of Insults by Dr. Nigel Berba, Barba of Psychology Today. The psychology of insults, the desire to put others down may be as old as dot, 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 chickens. Posted November 21st, 2016, reviewed by uh, this Akua Hagen. Or, or Ikua, or Yukua, Hagen, okay? There's a picture on here with two, uh, you know, two Caucasian ladies sitting on the couch, you know, it look like they, they're looking toward their left in sort of anger or disdain, okay? Let me just, this has a, uh, a beginning paragraph beside it. Uh, it consists of one long sentence, right? Now that we've lived through election largely fought let, let me go now that we ha, we we've should have been we have i'm saying now that we have lived through an election largely fought and won on the basis of insults it is time for an epidemiology of the put down right that means the control of diseases you know epidemi epidemiology the science of controlling diseases you know in this case, social pathology, okay, criminal insanity, okay. It is time to, it is time for an epidemiology of the put down. What is the underlying psychology of, of insults, dash, dash, and why do they suddenly seem to be everywhere? Question, you know. Motivated by anger? Another question. That's in bold face. And the paragraph continues. Chickens are famous for having a pecking order in which the bottom chicken in the hierarchy is pecked by everyone else and the top chicken is not pecked by anyone. The chicken hierarchy is settled by physical aggression. Okay. Well, I think we all know what physical aggression is, right? I'll have to go to the link. Okay. We know what physical aggression is. Let's just see. Let's 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 get the psychological point of view of it. Okay, okay. Anger, rage. Underneath of it is rage, comma, aggression. Reviewed by Psychology Today staff. Okay, first paragraph. Let's, let's two sentences. Anger is one of the basic human emotions, as elemental as happiness, sadness, anxiety, or disgust. These emotions are tied to basic survival and were honed over the course of human history. Okay. Anger is related to fight, flight, or freeze response of the sympathetic nervous system, semicolon. It prepares humans to fight, but fighting doesn't necessarily mean throwing punches. It might motivate communities to combat injustice by changing laws or enforcing new norms, right? Check this out. It might motivate communities to combat injustice by changing laws or enforcing new norms, right? That's a civilized approach to it, right? And more than likely, you know, let me briefly comment on that, this paragraph, right? And more than likely, uh, uh, these uh, violent folks, you know, these violent people, you know, reactionary violent people 
want you to uh, pursue this particular avenue for the most part. You know, they want you to work within the system. They want, you know, and really, it, it's no guarantee. You know, it, 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 it having hard like I'm, you know, as hard as I, as hard as I don't know what, trying to get legislation, you know, the anti lynching legislation, the Emmett Till uh, legislation passed, you know. So, you know, it's, it's, you have to take it on a case by case basis, you know. I, I think we, it's just it's a, a pursue, right, the most ingenious and the most effective course, you know, to seek a remedy in this kind of situation, right? You know, uh, as far as I'm going to go with it, okay, as far as I'm going to go with it. Uh, but um, let me read this, this, this third paragraph underneath it, then I'm going back to the main article, okay? Of course, anger too easily or frequently mobilized can undermine relationships or damage physical health in the long term. Also, mental health, you know, they, they left that out. I mean, they just had mental health in there as well, you know. Prolonged release of the stress hormones that accompany anger can destroy neurons in areas of the brain associated with judgment and short-term memory and weaken the immune system. Whoa! Let me just go read that back because that's, you know, within this uh, dynamic right here, right? This anger, dynamic, this, uh, this domain, this uh, domain of anger, right? Check this out. Of course, anger too, anger too easily or frequently mobilized can, mobilized, can undermine relationships or damage health in the long term. Prolonged release of the stress hormones that accompany anger can destroy neurons in areas of the brain associated with judgment and short-term memory and weaken the immune system. See? And I don't know if we need a second opinion on this or not. You know, there's, there's no uh, commentary. You know, there's no uh, con con contrary rebuttal, you know, con contrawise uh, uh, understanding of this particular paragraph right here, you know, because... You know, it is, well, it, it can go a lot of ways, you know, it can go a lot of ways in terms of, under, you know, whether this is true or not. That's what I'm saying. How do we know this is true or not? You know, we, we have to analyze it a little further, you know. The next paragraph, for those who struggle with chronic anger or those who only experience occasional outbursts, Learning skills to identify and navigate this positive emotion can lead to growth and change, okay? Well, here they, they're talking about it individually. I'll tell you why I was kind of slow on this particular uh, responding uh, explicatorially on this uh, particular uh, paragraph right here because I was looking at it nationally. See, I'm looking at it nationally. I'm looking at anger nationally. I'm looking at uh, a national social insult. See, national social insult. You know, these people are or insulting us and assaulting us, you know, on a national basis, on a community basis, right? That's how I'm looking at it, okay? Let me read that paragraph, uh, one, two, the third paragraph again. Of course, anger too easily or frequently mobilized can undermine relationships or damage physical health in the long term. Yes, yeah, see, easily too frequently mobilized. Hmm? That's, 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 that connotes instigation to me, you know, uh, periods of anger that's instigated, right? That's what, that's what it, the impression that it gives me, you know, uh, agent provocateur, you know, people starting, people causing riots and everything, you know, that can lead to prolonged release of the stress hormones that accompany anger that can very well destroy neurons in several areas of the brain with, with judgment and short-term memory and weaken the immune system. So, you know, a lot of these, uh, we can, by analyzing this particular paragraph right here concerning anger, you know, and the frequent mobilization and this undermining of relationships or damage to physical health in the long term, right? And this prolonged uh, release of the stress hormones 
that a company anger can destroy neurons, you know, can cause brain damage, can cause brain damage and a weakened immune system. So we can uh, can deduce from this particular paragraph right here that these uh, deliberate planned insults and, on, and assaults on our community is designed to make us sick. Stress kills. Anybody, you ever heard that term before? Stress kills. So they, they're trying to stress us out. With, with, you know, you know, we're, we're, we're under attack, psychologically and physically, you know. We need to understand that. Okay, let's get back to the main article. And all of this comes up to uh, mental slavery. You know, Prophet Obadrali said, come, you know, the prophet that was sent to us came here to redeem us from mental slavery, right? He said, come good people, I, this nation, I, your prophet, was sent to redeem this nation from mental slavery, which you now have, right? Da, 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 in the voice of the prophet article of the Morse literature pamphlet, right? Let's go back to the main article, though. Okay. Let's see what paragraph I was on. Okay. If this logical, we can assume it's on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me start back uh, with chickens are famous. We'll have, no, chicken has famous. I haven't taken the one at all. No, we'll have to go back that far. In a verbal, okay, in a verbal, look, let's review that, in a verbal society, okay, let's, I said that, but I want to review that anyway. In a verbal society, check it out, verbal, in a verbal society, comma, such as the human one, and check this out, in, in, in a verbal society, you know, okay, you got the, you got, you got the name calling right here, right, check this out, then you got such as the human one, in another comma, it's in, Two commas. Physical aggression is less often used to settle issues. Colon. But check this out. Physical aggression is less often used to settle issues of status. You know that's 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 uh, that's on a case by case basis because physical you know police murder is physical aggression. You know police uh, assault. You know defense. You know. Uh, uh, defenseless uh, suspects in custody, right? It's physical aggression. You know, and you know, it's criminal aggression. You know, how can you uh, beat and bang on somebody's handcuff in the backseat of a squad car or, or the paddy bike, you know? What does, what does that say? You know, that's criminality, right? That's criminality. And, you know, the, 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 arda you know, the audacity, you know, the audaciousness Right or the blatantness, right? The sensationality, you know, of this of these kinds of, of these crimes, right? Can cause all these uh, uh, psychological and uh, phys psychophysiological, you know, uh, abnormalities, you know, in the, in the not only the individual but the, in the community. So you know, this it's a serious demonstration, right? But it all comes under the under the the the, the, the heading of uh, 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 mental slavery, right? That's that's the topic we're talking about. The prophet came to redeem us from mental slavery, right? Let me let's let me start with this, this paragraph over there so we get a better understanding. Uh, because you know I you know I uh, haven't really practiced in my articulation. You know I'm going to really hone my uh, communication skills, you know. All right. Uh, in a verbal society, comma, such as the human one, comma, physical aggression is less than, is less often used to settle issues of status, colon. These are most likely referred to verbal interactions, period. An insult can thus be interpreted as an attempt to reduce the social status of the recipient and raise the relative status of the insulter. Check, you see that? An insult, right? In this case, uh, the media, uh, the, the, the media or slash sensational, right? Projection and enhancement of the word nigger can thus be interpreted as an attempt to reduce the social status of the recipient community and raise the relative status of the insulting community, right? But I, 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 you know, in, in the case of nigger, it calls somebody a nigger, and you know, you don't, you don't understand that word, right? Where it came from, how it came about, 
you know, what it means and everything. It's dehumanization, right? They tried to re rob a people, a human being, a human creation of its status as human beings, right? To objectification, right? Dehumanization. It is a crime against humanity. That's why we can't, you know, uh, our, our young folks, right? They're hard eating and disobedient, calling themselves nigger and everything. It's all in the media and everything, right? But nigger, right, is a crime against humanity. Right? It is both an insult and an assault, right? It's an insult to the intelligence, it's an assault to the physical health of the person who listened to it. And in terms of it causing stress and everything. We just read that in anger. Right? No one likes to be called a nigger. No one. Yes, you know, I don't care what race or creed you are. It is a really, really bad word. And you know, it didn't come from it, it came, came from the same place where black come from. Iblis Iradin. That's where racism started. Read the Quran. Read the read the read the, the fall. Read the creation and fall of Adam. The creation and fall of Adam in Iblis Iraqi. Well, in my house. <laughs> right? It's criminally insane. It's criminal insanity. Right? Racism follows the rules of mental disorder, according to, you know, a very highly, highly powerful, highly uh, uh, renowned. Uh, clinical psychologist who was also an expert in Egyptian history. You know, Dr. Asa G. Hilliard III, you know. And, you know, I got I got to get into him deeply as I should, you know, because I skim a lot of this stuff, you know. I got to profoundly look at Dr. Hilliard's uh, work, you know, the late uh, great uh, Dr. Hilliard, Asa G. Hilliard III, you know. I got to get into that because, you know, something else, you know. But I got a problem with a lot of these African Central scholars. They, you know, they, they, uh, well, a lot of them are Masons. You know, and, you know, they, 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 uh, certain aspects of their in intellectual hands were tied. Okay. Well, anyway, let's get back to this article right here, right? It's a total of 14 uh, paragraphs in this article right here, right? Some of them are three or four, three and four sentence paragraphs, right? Well, I'm going to go down to some that, if it's not too, if it doesn't get redundant, you know, I'm going to, you know, for the sake of time, I'm going to stop right there. Okay. Okay, and the verbal sign is such as human aggression of the insulter. Okay, we've read that. The next one. If that logic is correct, okay, comma, we can assume that insults are often motivated by anger surrounding issues of status insecurity. Right? Status insecurity. Well, that kind of works both ways. Right? They might be, you know, this, uh, 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 these type, this type of insult, social insult, social psychological insult, right? This criminal social psychological warfare type insult. Okay? Uh, are often motivated by anger surrounding issues of status insecurity. Now check this out. They could be instilling status insecurity as well as projecting status insecurity. I think it's both. I think it's both. You know, people who have a tendency to, to insult people or try to put other people down to make themselves look, look, look big or look better, they got a problem with this though. Right, you got a problem with yourself. You know they're weak. And see, the underlying the, the underlying basis of insult is what what these uh, what Doctor Barbara is saying is insecurity. You know, it's insecurity. It's insecurity on the part of the insulter, right? And I think they instilling insecurity on the you know the person the the target of their assault and insult. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that was just that was the first uh, a sentence in this uh, paragraph. This paragraph has uh, two sentences, right? The second sentence. Many insults are reactive. Hold it. 
<laughs> there are responses, they, they are responses to real or imagined slights from others, such as person accidentally cutting in front of someone else in a line, you like like rooting somebody in line, you know. Sometimes bullies, you know, bullies do that. Some bullies uh, uh, get up, get up right in front of you, you know, and, and get waited on first and everything. Where well, I've seen people do this in uh, in restaurants, you know, fast food restaurants, they jump in front of an elderly person, right, and, and get waited on, some, or somebody who they think is is not going to. Uh, say anything about it. You know, usually a lot of people who have sense, who, a lot of people who can smell, you know, a game, can, you know, can smell a, a trap, you know, social psychological trap, you know, usually let it ride, right? But some people don't, some people don't, you know, and sometimes that's when the crap can hit the fan, you know. And uh, sometimes you wish, <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, sometimes I wish I was wearing the board from vest, you know, was in, out there in the street sometimes, you know, when arguments happen, you know. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> not a bad idea. Well, anyway, let me read that again, okay? Many insults are reactive. They are responses to real or imagined slights from others, such as a person accidentally cutting in front of someone else in a line. Same thing in you know, road rage too, you know, happened with road rage. You know, that's why I couldn't understand road rage. Unless somebody was deliberately trying to cause you to have an accident or, you know, trying to deliberately uh, be aggressive towards you, you know, towards your, your uh, you know, you know when you know when somebody have a, a real, a criminal intentionality towards you, right? But if a person, uh, need to get over in front of you while driving, you know, and they may or may not have turned their turn signal on, right? And it's really, it really wasn't a problem. You know, it didn't jolt at you. You know, you didn't uh, uh, lose control or even slightly lose control of your steering, so it, it shouldn't bother you. You know, but some people got, like I said, they got a problem with this, though. You know, and they, that would tick them off. And, you know, people might, they might be already angry at something. And something like that would just tip them over, you know. You got to watch that, you know. Well, anyway, then you got this a whole new driving culture. And they had people talking on the cell phones while they're driving, young children in the back seat, you know. And you got to watch that. It's a whole new driving culture out there, you know. Uh, being able to drive is, a serious, is, is, is getting to be a more, an even more serious skill these days. You know, I'm, I'm a former driver myself, commercial driver myself. You know, I understand. Listen, when I was a driver, I used to watch defensive driving uh, videos on a regular here because, you know, we got a lot of people out there who cannot drive. They're just pushing vehicles. Okay. Well, anyway, let's get back to Zia, the next paragraph. We live in a period of extreme concern. Woo, listen to Dr. Barber. We live in a period of extreme concern about how we are perceived by others. Hmm. Yeah, you know, just the media age and everything, you know. The march of time. Well, let me continue. Semicolon. Social psychologists are charting a steady increase in narcissism among college students. They got a number one up here, right? But it's not a link to it, so I'm not going to bother about it. It looks like, a, you know, like, you know, number one beside a word or a sentence indicating a footnote, but it's not a link, so. But the word narcissism has a link lying onto it, but we know what narcissism is. Okay. Uh, let's go to it, you know, just for the sake of understanding, those of us who don't know what it is. Okay. Narcissism, reviewed by Psychology Today staff, underneath of it, As a, a Caucasian lady, she got a, a face in her, on her hand, looked like she's looking at the mirror, you know, uh, under some sort of stress and just, you know, just right? It says, narcissists 
Poirot have a prominent place in the popular imagination and the label narcissist, quote unquote, is widely deployed to refer to people who appear too full of themselves. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you know who flashed through my mind when I said that? <laughs> the former POTUS. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never, you know, let me tell you, let me find before I go further, right? I never laughed so hard. The last time I laughed so hard at the uh, at politics, right, was when Pat, Pat Robinson was running for president. <laughs> and uh, Donald Trump's presidency, right? <laughs> it was, I had a ball, right? <laughs> I'm glad I don't smoke reefer no more because I'm going to hurt myself. <laughs> well, anyway, right. I mean, yeah, yeah, the former POTUS ran through my mind right when I read that uh, uh, meaning right there, right? The psychology, the day meaning right here. Uh, narcissism is properly viewed on a spectrum, okay? The trait is normally distributed in the population. Uh-oh. With most people scoring near the middle and a few at either extreme. The narcissistic personality inventory, NPI, NPI, developed by Robert Raskin and Calvin S. Hall in 1979, is the most commonly used measure of the trait. Scores range from 0 to 40 with the average tend to fall in the low to mid-teens. Healthy individuals who score somewhat higher may be perceived as exceedingly charming, especially on the first encounter, but eventually come across as vain. Such individuals might have awkward or stressful personal encounters, but still have a fundamentally healthy personality. Okay, let's go back. Okay, let's let's finish up this paragraph right here. We stopped at the uh, narcissist narcissism among college students. There is little consensus about why this is happening, but some scholars believe that the more children are measured on evaluative scales, aptitude tests, IQ scores, and GPA, the more sensitive they are to threats to their social rank. Okay, let me read this whole paragraph over again because that break, uh, that link when we linked on to narcissism, I think caught the I feel caught the break in the, in the train of thought here. So I'm starting at the beginning of this paragraph. We live in a period of extreme concern about how we are perceived by others. Semicolon. Social psychologists are charting a steady increase in narcissism among college students. There is little consensus about why this is happening, colon, comma, but some scholars believe that the more children are measured on evaluative, evaluative scales, aptitude tests, IQ scores, and GPA, the more sensitive they are to threats to their social rank. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, they put too much value, right, on, on you know aptitude tests, IQ scores, and their GPA. You know, they're equating with these uh, things about themselves with their value and self worth excessively. You know, I've seen this. You know, uh, uh, the colloquial term for these kind of people is eggheads. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of people who really understand the importance of education, especially youngsters, who really value being smart, right? They usually fall into this this uh, this description right here. You know, they may have they may have development uh, 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 some uh, a mild form of narcissism that forms within them. You know, I've seen this among a lot of a lot of a lot of nerds. You know, quote unquote. Uh, for lack of a better term, I don't like using that term, but you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, people who who overly value uh, their own uh, aptitude, you know, an IQ, 
you know, and, and GPAs and that sort of thing. You know, I've seen this, you know, in, in uh, these kind of uh, folks, you know, youngsters. Of course, this narcissism, next paragraph, of course, this narcissism trend is only accentuated by social media. Like that. This media age where participants are subject to unrelenting evaluation by other network members who encourage participants to inflate their egos, comma, often at the expense of others. There's that number one again, but it's no link to it. Okay, must be. Well, anyway, concerned with how one is perceived creates social insecurity that may be relieved by lashing out at other chickens or people in, in parentheses in the area. <laughs> Some networks are replete with individuals who deliver stinging rebukes because they enjoy doing so and because they are mostly exempt from the reprisals that one might expect for the real put downs, for the real world put downs. Okay, they are exempt from the reprisals that one might expect from the real world put downs. They exempt, they may be exempt from it or they may be far removed from it. You know, they, they might be in another country on the keyboard talking trash, insulting people, you know, causing people, you know, making people sick. On the keyboard talking trash, you know, Exempt, you know, well, that's another form of this exemption that I perceive, you know, real world put now, the exempt for the reprisals for that one that one might expect for real world put downs, you know, exempt. And also, they might feel uh, 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 exemption, you know, another uh, a sublet of this particular exemption is when the people is, is, is perceive themselves as being too weak to strike back. The way that they want to strike back, see, the cowering, see, they, 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 uh, uh, yeah, you know, they're, they're too fearful. They're, they're cowering. So, you know, you know, run the attorney Trump, Crump, go run crying to Crump. You know what I mean? Okay. Let's go down a little further. Something, something here is called content, colon, status, competence, sex, and hygiene. You know, it's bold face down here. It's like a little subtitle in bold face. Content, comma, status, competence, sex, and hygiene. Okay. The purpose of a put down is to reduce someone else in the imaginary status hierarchy. Check that out. So it is hardly surprising that insults will often refer to a person's social status in terms of ancestry, lack of prestige, or membership in a despised outgroup. Okay? For example, Nazis or vagrants. Right? Now, now we we'll stop right there. Right? Also, a lot of these sensationalized reports about us being intellectually inferior, right? We can't, we can't uh, 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 quote unquote, blacks uh, uh, are unable to pass aptitude tests on, uh, on the SATs, on SAT tests. But they don't tell you how these tests are construed, right? Or, or, or deliberately configured, whereby African Americans will, 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 will come up short anyway because of the, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the unequal, Right? Education, education applications in the schools, right? So, you know, that that's a part of it too. You know, this, you know, uh, a lot of, lot of, lot of the, the public schools are deliberately inadequate, right? And, you know, and, and ain't no doubt in my critical divine, aspiring scientific mind, that a lot of these uh, uh, superintendents get paid these these exorbitant salaries, you understand, to keep these children dumbed down in the public school system. I believe that. It's a pattern there, right? Sellouts, right? 
we, we, uh, our community is being assisted by our own on, on you know on this on these these the, uh, dependent levels, you know these inadequate levels across the across the societal spectrum of accomplishment, right? Don't want to be free. Too lazy, too soft, to rumble, to go through that childbirth. See, like old soft, like old soft, you know, dumb female. You understand? Just want to party all the time. She don't want to have children. You know, she got, but well, she got married though. She's married. She has a husband. Husband, you know, he's doing very well. He wants to raise a family, but she don't want to go through childbirth. She don't want to, what, what she say, mess her body up. Right. Well, you know. Same thing with our leadership, right? You know, the, some of you know the, the executive, you know, the strategic level. You know, we're enslaved because of that strategic decision making level, right? It's not right. They still saw, right? They don't want to be free. They don't want to be free. They don't. They don't want. They don't. They don't want to put forth that effort, right? To bang this bully in his nose. Right, you'd be surprised how much people in the world are crazy about us, man. They, that's why these people do these kind of things, right? To show us in the bad light to the rest of the world and everything, right? Because we're we're the pop engines, we're the, the, the pop cultural engines in in America. They know that, and you, they they even see that as a threat. You know, you guys have to read Thomas Pierce Bailey and get a full a full idea of that demonstration, all right? You know, because it's all systematic, it's systematic. You understand? Systematic, it's structured, right? This is what's going on right now, right? Mental slavery. Mental slavery is, what is, is, is political, Psychological, it is a violent, right? A violent political psychological instrument, right? It's a violent political psychological prison. Mental slavery is, right? Then you got another people who are so dashingly, they, they uh, uh, do subliminal suggestion, another psychological attack, right? Another psychological. Uh, assault and insult, right, is to encourage people, right, to commit sin and crime. You know, crime against your own body, crime against your own soul, crime against your own spirit, you know, by being perverted, by having, you know, uh, uh, relations with the same sex and everything. You ever notice that they don't call it homosexual marriage? You ever notice that? They call it same sex marriage, right? You know, it's, it's not a holy matrimony. That's why it's what, what they call a civil union, right? But a marriage between a man and a woman, right, is holy matrimony, right? It's heterosexuality, right? It's, heter it's a heterosexual relationship, right? But homosexual, what take this a homosexual relationship, homosexual marriage, right? You know, it even connect, it even has a, an appropriate connotation. That's why they don't use it. Because they know it's a crime. On several levels. See. Let's get back to, uh, you know, this right here. Content, status, competence, sex, and hygiene. Com status, competence, sex, and hygiene. Check it out. Right? Psychologically, psych, psych, psychological insult, you know, runs, you know, runs a gamut. You know, you know, it's a spectrum here. It's a full spectrum here. Right? They just covered some of it. You know, this this article right is 14 paragraphs, right? I meant to do a part two of this. I gotta run to the bathroom. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to the first paragraph of this, then I'm going to end it and uh, call this part one. Content, status, competence, sex, and hygiene. The purpose of a put down is to reduce someone else to the imaginary status hierarchy. Check it out. Imaginary status hierarchy. 
So it is hardly surprising that insults will often refer to a person's social status in terms of ancestry, lack of prestige, or membership in a despised outgroup. For example, Nazis or vagrants. I'm going to put it in there. Blacks. Otherwise, the content of insult across the ages is monotonously predictable. Colon, many insults featured in sexual component feature feature a se many insults. I'm gonna repeat that. Many insults feature a sexual component, refer to sexual organs, or bring up shameful or ineffectual sexual behavior. Uh oh. I go back to the Garden of Eden. You know, you can go back all the way back to the Garden of Eden story. You know, you know by that that, that dynamic right there. Let me read that again. The purpose of a put down is to reduce someone else to the imaginary status hierarchy. So it is hardly surprising that insults will often refer to a person's social status in terms of ancestry, lack of prestige, or membership in a despised outgroup. For example, Nazis or vagrants. Otherwise, the content of insults across the ages is monotonously predictable. Colon, many insults feature a sexual component, refer to sexual organs, or bring up shameful or ineffectual sexual behavior. In addition to this status and sexuality, comma, insults inflict shame by mentioning unappealing traits, fatness, shortness, baldness, spidiness, and contagious diseases. Oh, and, and oh, you know what they're not saying here, right? Size, size don't matter. <laughs> size does matter. <laughs> size does matter. Based on my experience. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I fool a lot of, well, I ain't going there. That's, that's personal. And that might get, you know, might go toward the V. And I ain't, you know, Muslim. Islam. Another way, this is the next paragraph, this is one sentence paragraph right here, uh, separated by a semicolon. Another way of taking a person down, check this out, another way of taking a person down by questioning their intelligence or general mental competence. For insult purposes, comma, recipients are invariably stupid or crazy, quote unquote. Okay, so I'm going to stop it right there and call this part one and uh, resume this uh, later on, inshallah, okay? Uh, may Allah bless us, you know, forgive us of our sins, have mercy on our souls, and may Allah protect our children, you know, bless our children, uh, make them good children, you know, good obedient children, successful children, go to school and get good grades, good, good, uh, good grades, and uh, can, uh, come out and get educated, uh, very well educated and get married and have a good families and everything read and lead a, a good and wonderful life you know and uh, be a good worshiper you know to a law in this messenger okay and uh, with that I'm gonna say uh, I mean and uh, until uh, the resumption of part two of the psychology of insults Islam Islam link up to light what about a cartoon Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Ameen.